We are continuing from Estegom to Bratislava, the capital of Slovakia. As we enter Slovakia, Werner, our tour guide, points out how difficult it was to cross national borders before these countries joined the European Union. It was really, uh, you know, it made those tours, the Eastern tours, pretty demanding and uh, difficult, those long borders, a long waiting time. Okay, and we are in Slovakia. Crossing the Danube, we approach Bratislava. The iconic and revolving Altitude restaurant towers 636 feet above the bridge. Bratislava's Hrad, or castle, is perched on a hill on the left. It's partially reflected in our bus's windshield. Time to discover more about Bratislava. Baroque and Rococo architecture is displayed on well-maintained facades and frescoes throughout the old town. The graceful Romanesque archways are alluring. Gothic St. Martin's Cathedral dates back to the 13th century and also provided a defensive fortification for the town. This sculpture depicts Martin cutting off his cloak to share it with a beggar. In the floor, there's a glassed over crypt revealing three occupants. As a coronation church, its treasury includes a crown of King Stephen, who later was sainted. Nearby is a Holocaust memorial. The Slovak National Theater's historic opera building was presenting Lohengrin. The plaza in front of it displays a mosaic of an old city gate. Bratislava has much eye-catching and humorous outdoor art. Examples are this golden dragon guarding a pharmacy, and these sexy legs at a nightclub entrance. One of these sculptures seems to be popping out of a sewer hole. It's Peeping Camille, who frequently gets helmet rubs for luck. That also keeps up his shine. Several others bring a smile, such as this eavesdropping Napoleonic soldier. By the way, Bratislava was invaded by Napoleon twice. For a smaller-sized city, Bratislava is quite impressive. It's beautiful, and with its many amusing touches, doesn't take itself too seriously. It's about an hour's drive from Bratislava to Vienna. The abundant museums, fine statues, splendid buildings, street artists, coffee shops, and people constantly in motion overwhelm the senses. The Opera House's outdoor screen for free viewing provides the background music for our quick tour of a small part of the downtown area. The drama of classical music, opera, and architecture abound as evidenced by lots of golden domes, horses prancing off of buildings, and other cultural finery. There is even an ice cream shop named after a grand opera. For a departure from the classical architecture, take a look at this apartment house designed by the artist Hunterfasser and the architect Krowina. They renounced straight lines, going for curving floors and edges and a forested roof. The exteriors are a riot of color and shapes that would put some homeowners' associations to the test. Unconventional Hundertwasser House was completed in 1985. The adjacent shopping village has its own unique attraction. 
We opt for a more conventional restroom, then a dinner of Wiener schnitzel and beer. It's easy to get around downtown Vienna by means other than cars. In addition to walking, there is an efficient subway system, street cars, dedicated bike lanes that are away from cars, and lots of horse-drawn carriages for those who aren't in a hurry to get to their destination. Movie buffs will recognize another vehicle, the 212-foot-tall Vienna Ferris wheel featured in movies such as The Third Man. There are also carousels, such as this highly decorated one near St. Stephen's Cathedral. Yes, Vienna has its own St. Stephen's. More about that later. It's time to ogle another beauty of a building with a thoughtful message. To each age its art, to art its freedom, is inscribed over the secession building, which now is an art exhibition center. From the age of royal art, the imperial treasury at the Hofburg Palace houses a huge collection of secular and ecclesiastical wonders. While the Habsburgs may have ruled their subjects badly, what they accumulated with their subjects' wealth is stunning. There are 21 galleries to visit. Diamonds, gold, and pearls are part of this set from the 16th century. At times, this agate bowl was thought to be the Holy Grail. This is what the Habsburg party boy wore to his coronation. Like this opal, royal gems tend to come in just one size, extra jumbo. Said to be a unicorn's horn with magical healing power, this is actually a nearly eight-foot-long tusk from a narwhal. This bejeweled octagonal crown is over a thousand years old. Highlight of the collection, it is believed to have been made for the first king to call himself Holy Roman Emperor. Within walking distance of each other stands the St. Stephen's and the St. Michael's cathedrals. Gothic St. Stephen's construction began in the 12th century and lasted for hundreds of years. Since our visit occurs during the Catholic celebration of Pentecost, Bright red and purple coverings adorn the windows, casting brilliant colors on the cathedral walls and columns. Towards the rear, the stone pulpit is especially notable. The stairway's handrail depicts lizards and frogs appearing to bite each other as an allegory to the struggle between good and evil. The master sculptor ensured that he would be credited for his work by including a carving of himself peeking out below the pulpit stairway. St. Michael's Cathedral is smaller and older than St. Stephen's. Its pipe organ, though, is elaborately gilded and said to be the largest in Vienna. Firmly planted in the secular world, Kartner Street has lots of high-end shopping, fine pastry and coffee shops, and numerous street musicians. Vast Schönbrunn Palace was the summer home of the Habsburgs. It was supposed to rival Versailles, but ended up smaller. Nevertheless, it's quite impressive. Photography is not allowed inside. However, the grounds are fair game. Back in Vienna, souvenir shops themed around Mozart and Austrian Empress Elizabeth seem to be everywhere. This form of commercialism even creeps onto the opera house's outside display screen. Brief as this visit is, we leave Vienna with a better feel for its rich and enticing cultural depth.